and you can stand here and you can put it on a timer. Retired head of Mithila College now, Sakhiretha and Renuka and all. So we were here and then we said that we were wanting to stay. So we had to go to the guard and we had to do a whole crazy, a lot of crazy things. But like how did you manage it? One child, I'll tell you, today the TV says this is wrong, that is wrong. Look at this. Nature is perfect. Yeah. Imperfectly perfect, yeah. you know. <laughs> so if we, if we are here, trust that nature knows best. See, look, I, I'll tell you something, I'll show you something. Look, over here, over here, you see this? Just now that master, it, uh, mm. master already. But day after tomorrow, God, this part of the skin and this part of the skin, magic, it comes back together and it fixes itself. So nature is like that. I can break this branch today. If I was an elephant, I would break it and chew it if there was no other food. Nature will come and say, come back, come back, little drink, little water, little this, little that. It's like a doctor and a patient and everything that's all right. <laughs> yes? Can we say one thing quietly, just like a prayer? Jungle, Nadi ki maa hai. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm saying it. Can we say it? One, two, three, softly. Jungle, Nadi ki maa hai. Jungle, Nadi ki maa hai. Ek humne kaam kiya. Ek school mein, ek baut achcha bachcha tha. Pura ganja kar diya tha. Ek choti chuktiya rai gai thi. There was a ceremony in his house. Aur uske saath mein ek aat saal ka bachcha, Sardar ji bachcha, उसके सर पे वो बांध के तो हमने परमिशन लेके उनको बोला कि अपना बाल खोल दो और ये जो लड़का था जिसके घर में ये हुआ था तो हमने दो ग्लास पानी लिए तो एक टकलू सर के ऊपर गिराया और एक इस बच्चे के ऊपर गिराया तो फिर हमने सबको पूछा कि किसके बाल में पानी अब तक है दो मिनट के बाद तो ऐसा ऐसा किया तो निकलता ही जाता है सरदार जी के ऊपर से तो हम ये कहते हैं कि हम अपनी दुनिया को टकलू बनाना चाहते हैं कि बाल के बाल तो जो टकलू है यहाँ माफ कीजिए बाल के बाल में एक असद है दुनिया को सरदार जी बनाएंगे तो वी वांट वी वांट दी एर्थ टू बी द वे वी आर वेरी लक्की एंड You will see everything fix itself. जो बुढ़ा पार्टी है ना और बच्चा पार्टी सिर्फ दो पॉलिटिकल पार्टी है पूरे दुनिया में सिर्फ दो पॉलिटिकल पार्टी है बच्चा पार्टी बुढ़ा पार्टी अमेरिका में जाओ किधर भी जाओ और बच्चा पार्टी ऐसा मत करो यार कहे कोटे ये करना ऐसा नहीं करो अंकल मेरे को ठीक मुझे कितना प्यारा चाहिए उसको मत काटो मेरा दिल and with the children, if we look at the children, what do we want to do? Everything is for you, my waiter. 
हम पेड़ को काटते हैं तो आए मेरे बच्चे के लिए मैं पेड़ काटता हूँ ऐसा नहीं है <laughs> तो बोलो नहीं 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 मत काटो मेरे लिए मत काटो सो चिल्ड्रेन आर अ वेरी गुड फोर्स मदर्स आर अ ह्यूज फोर्स एंड आई थिंक इट्स टाइम फॉर मैन टू स्टेप बैक लिटिल विट एंड लेट द रियल वॉरियर चिल्ड्रेन एंड मदर अलाउ दी अर्थ टू फिक्स यू डोंट हैव टू प्लांट द ट्री यू जस्ट हैव टू लिव You say you can't save the tiger if you don't save the forest. You save the forest. You save all the creatures. You save all the creatures. You harvest the rain. The rain will feed the aquifers. The aquifers will feed the wells. It's the same with the bustard. It's a sign of grasslands. Today, we were taught by the Germans and the British that grasslands no use. Plant some trees, you know. Mm. But grasslands are grasslands. Yeah. Without them, there is nothing. You know. So all these habitats right now, all you bacha party. Everyone knows him, no? He's big. It's everything that I speak. Is, I'm nothing but a And channel for Salim Ali, for Dharma Kumar Singh ji, for Abdul Ali, for Kailash Sankla. All these, you know, stalwarts. Stalwarts. And I like that sentence of Jungle Nadi ki Maan. Jungle Nadi ki Maan. That's the best. It is. So that, so that's a good bait. <laughs> I will get something nice. The birds will come and watch. So we ask children: Is there any any creature in the world, any creature which has no use? It's completely useless. So the children say, cockroach. I said, no, it's a cockroach. When you go to in your kitchen, you take a nice cutka and you take clean everything. I said that little piece of dal which was there, na. Cockroach will feed for one and a half months. Only. It's fine. So if they did not feed, if they were not there, bacteria will kill you. Mm. So everything is in a circle. Everything, not a single species. The mm. tick on the back of the tiger is as important mm. as the tiger. Mm. So when they talk and they tell you about this forest, what it's doing, their life is dedicated to mm. trying to understand, and nobody understands. Mm. But you must have faith. You must trust. Nature knows best. It's your friend. Protect nature. It will protect you. I'm talking to you like you're 11 year old. This is how. This is how we need, need to, to be. We need to be 10 years old in our heads and forget that we are old, like Buddha party <laughs> and Bachcha party. Sadness. You know? <laughs> are growing on rocks. There are different types of fungi which are called. Uh, you know, they are they are only growing on rocks. These are pioneers. So, what is the similarity between a spider and a fungus? Spider also, they don't catch the prey and eat it just like that. They also have saliva, which they throw into the prey. They inject it into the prey, and that is how the de the dead animal. So there are two functions of the saliva of the spider. One is to paralyze it, and the other one is to start the breakdown process, digestion. So they put the enzyme, they put the saliva into the prey. The prey is killed. They wrap it around with the web material and they hang it and wait for the entire thing to putrefy and get converted into a soup. And then they will just take the carcass, pierce a hole, and suck the soup out. So fungi also do the same, no? They also have roots with which mycelia, with which they will throw the acids out, and that will break down the food outside the fungi, convert it into material which can be absorbed by the roots, like a soup, and then that will be absorbed. But I mean, the story of mycelia is like it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. People you can't walk so, anywhere without having mycelia under your feet. So we Stop were it. believing all this while, you know, these trees. You feel uh, <coughs> sorry if there are giants, but I'm going to break your uh, thought process when you say that uh, trees don't have emotions and trees can't feel and trees can't communicate. All that is wrong. Trees can communicate. They have stomata with which they can release the. Materials in the air, and other if there's a woodcutter coming from here, the trees can release chemicals in the air which are stress hormones. And when these stress hormones are released, other neighboring trees come to know that there is some danger, so they will shrivel, they will close their leaves, whatever is their defense strategy to escape from a predator, they will do that. So this is aerial, but in the ground, under the ground, there are these mycelia which connect trees together from underground in the roots. and they establish connection so they are communicating with each other the trees are communicating under the ground we are stupid we can't even understand that they are doing that because we look only at the surface we can't go down into the soil so as was rightly said you know that 
we know billions of stars which exist in the universe but we don't know what is there in one inch of soil under our feet and so one fine morning he took the airgun and he shot a sparrow which was very close to his house and when he shot it and it was there on the ground he saw that the bird was not the common house sparrow which everybody sees around so that's when he thought that why not find out what this bird is because i don't know what it is so first important thing in science is curiosity if you don't have curiosity you cannot have science at all so his mind was curious and so he went to the bombay natural history society and that's where he was told that this bird is not the common house sparrow it is the at that time it was called yellow throated sparrow and now in the last few years because the names have been brought at par with all the birds of southeast asia it's been renamed as chestnut shouldered petronia but there's a big discussion right now that since this bird was instrumental in making dr salim ali inquisitive and interested in birds and that's how his entire story about birds bird watching and his books and everything which started with it why not keep the name of this bird yellow throated sparrow only at least in india because that will be a kind of an honor to the great bird man of india so the discussion is still on and i hope it happens but when i see i i refuse to say chestnut shouldered petrel <laughs> i always say no it's yellow throated yeah. sparrow because i every time i say yellow throated sparrow i'm remembering dr salim ali because as bitu said bitu and i we have had the luck fortune of spending a number of days and hours with dr salim ali walking around being with him in the bnhs during the centenary year celebration in uh, 1983 when mrs indira gandhi was here at that time the prime minister and we had an entire huge fanfare in the iit pavai mumbai which is where the centenary celebration was and that's when she announced about this 33 acre of land being leased to the bnhs for education and research purposes so that is how we have this land mass and we are very lucky it's adjoining the national park and we have saved it in a very nice way and we are here right now at uh, dr salim ali point called salim ali point we are overlooking the national park more than 105 square kilometers in area you can see here the vihar lake on this side beyond that is the tulsi lake and then the kaveri hills and this national park goes all the way towards tungareshwar tungareshwar wildlife sanctuary as you go northwards this is the southernmost boundary of the national park and if you go to the east you can go up till yaur thane okay which is why we are really very lucky to be in mumbai to have this miracle called sanjay gandhi national park this is our lungs and as i said you know as bitu is also saying bring more and more people here get them interested in nature wildlife let them become members of the bnhs that's a very important thing i became a member of the bnhs and then i started becoming volunteer all over the world you know talking about nature and wildlife and so on so this is the key you know the beginning the first step that you must make people to take become members of bnhs and we have a wealth i mean you go to the bnhs library and you see huge number of people are now going drifting away from books what a sad thing it is you know just referring to computers and mobile phones and ipads and there's so much knowledge wrapped in books and handling a book and seeing the old photos and all that we have 150 200 years old books they are all history of mumbai and you see some of them of course you need special permission and they are all locked up in a nice room but uh, we are trying to get them replicated and so on and so forth yeah these books are a treasure that you must buy and of course in the bnhs we have stuffed specimens of birds animals and so on and without these i am telling you there would not have been science and taxonomy Dr Salim Ali started as a hunter and a gatherer and a shooter of birds gatherer gathering specimens to study without that we would not have been able to come out with all the papers today somebody wants to study birds in india wants to make a book on birds of india they have to refer to these dead specimens so it is wrong to say that the birds are all a graveyard and this is a misery that we have caused in nature and all that nonsense no sometimes some things are needed for science without which science cannot proceed it cannot progress and that's how we have these bird specimens we have mammal specimens skins and so on but they've been collected what if you see some of the tags you'll read 1891 1840 1830 
we have not hunted after that. We collected enough specimens and that's it. But because of that, Humayun Abdul Ali published 180 papers in international journals. He should have been given a doctorate degree without any uh, study at all. He was a commerce person. Talk to us about Humayun Abdul Ali again. A uh, businessman, okay, having a nice business of iron and steel, okay, but Every day in the afternoon, he would go to the BNHS and study all these museum specimens. He would measure the beak, he would measure the wings, the tail and everything and all that was meticulously written down. Even that is published in the form of a book. Because without that, you can't find out differences in the subspecies and the races of birds in India. So measurements are all, it's called morphometry. Okay. Measurements are extremely important to know the variations. See, if you have some individuals which are from north, from east, from south, there will be variations in these species. And these species variations are the ones which brought out the taxonomy of the birds of India. And Abdul Ali ji, he studied these every day. He would come in the afternoon, spend from 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock till evening time, 8 o'clock in the society and do all these measurements and all that. With that, he published the checklist of the birds of Maharashtra and the checklist of birds of uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park. And trust me, that is the only authentic record because they are the specimens which are there in the museum collection of BNHS which say, okay, this bird was shot in Sanjay Gandhi. It was not Sanjay Gandhi National Park, Bombay. So Bombay forest means the only forest that we have is Sanjay Gandhi National Park. So these are the studies which Humayun Abdul Ali did, as I said, he should have been given a PhD just based on research that he was doing and publishing so many papers. And he was the one who was highly instrumental in saving this Sanjay Gandhi National Park. I think we owe a lot to him. At the age of 65, I used to roam around, Bittu used to roam around, we used to come in his car and do bird watching in this park and his wife Rafu would be there. I mean these are all old, I'm getting goosebumps. Old stories, he would drive and then his wife would be in front and suddenly he would cause an accident because he some bird, saw some bird and he <laughs> applied his brake and he would do he would do all kinds of crazy stuff here. And uh, he was once trying to follow these woodcutters here and the woodcutter had a chisel in their hand and they hit the chisel on his head. He had a fracture of his skull. These are the kind of dangers that people have. And with that then, you know, he was hospitalized and everything and so People have fought battles. It's not just just like that that we are enjoying this greenery. We are we are all enjoying this luxury because of these older generation people who have done a lot to save this national park and so on. You know? So we must be grateful to them.